From the Intellifluence headquarters in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, this is the Intellifluence Influencer Spotlight. In each episode, we sit down with an influencer from our network and we discuss their background as well as their unique approach to influencer marketing. Yanni Georgialakis is the creator of Foodie Fetish, a popular Instagram account that currently has over 3.3 million followers. Yanni's mother is Cuban and his father was born in Greece, making Yanni's heritage diverse and inspiring him to try all sorts of food. Foodie Fetish has partnered with McDonald's, Burger King, Papa John's, and Major League Baseball, to name a few. You can learn more at foodiefetish.com or follow Foodie Fetish on Instagram. So can you give us a brief background on um, Foodie Fetish, including the sequence of events that led you to become the popular influencer that you are? Definitely. So basically, I always had a photography background. So I always loved playing with cameras, video cameras, everything like that. Um, after high school, I got a couple a couple of financial jobs and then I landed into pharmaceuticals after about six or seven years. And then when I was in pharmaceuticals, I mean, I'm, which I'm still, I still am actually, um, I had a lot of time in between doctor's visits. So you're waiting a lot for the doctors, for them, you know, if you have a lunch, you're waiting for them to finish up with patients. If they're seeing a patient and you want to see them in between patients, you, you know, you could have 45 minutes of, of just waiting. So, you know, a lot of reps just play on their phone, go on blogs, go on Instagram. And this was about almost four years ago. So I was like, you know what? I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram. I have plenty of time. So let me make use of my time and try to think of something I can do that can be productive and, you know, some kind of hot side hustle that could end up being, uh, you know, lucrative. So I followed a lot of entrepreneurs on, on Instagram and I was reading that, you know, social media was taking off. It was going to be the next big thing. It wasn't going anywhere. So the time was now if you wanted to get into it and create a presence. So since food, you know, it was, and, and also they recommended starting something, uh, obviously niche based because if you wanted to be successful, people had to go to you because they knew you were an expert in something. So, you know, if you had cars and travel and drinks and, you know, house where it would be all over the place. So you tended to focus on one area and just, you know, stay on top of it. And you had to choose something you liked because you were always going to be dealing with that. So that's when I was like, okay, let me, let me do it with food. You know, I have a lot of experience with food. Why not? So I thought of the name. Um, you know, I bounced around with names back then, almost four years ago. It was easier to find usernames now. I wanted one that didn't have any, you know, underscores or or special you know, special letters, just to make it as easy as possible. People could find you. And then, yeah, started playing around, and I found Foodie Fetish. You know, the, it was there, available. So I went with that. So I'll start posting every day. You know, I posted once a day at the beginning. I was experimenting. Um, I was. I went to to uh, Greece and France that summer. So I found you know a lot of bakeries and pastries and just started doing that once a day. After about six months, I got. I reached ten thousand followers. I remember that was like the first pretty cool milestone. And I was like, okay, you know what? I mean, it's been six months. I've gotten ten thousand. I mean, I'm, I still have a job. I'm still doing well. I mean, I have nothing to lose. Why not keep going and see what happens? So, you know, from then on, I kept, you know, expanding it. Uh, a little after that, Instagram introduced their video feature because back then it was just photos. So when they introduced the video feature, I started tinkering with video. I had mainly always done photography. But, you know, you, you use the same technical skills with lighting and angles. So I started messing around with uh, some, some food photography, I mean, videography. So, you know, uh, that's when I, you know, and, and for me now, definitely food for videos is the way to go rather than pictures. I mean, I think a lot of food is just pleasing to the eye, you know, opening some cheesy pizza or, you know, chocolate oozing out, all that stuff works a lot better with video. So video started taking off and I noticed that you know, the, the content was getting uh, more viral videos. 
So then I went with what was hot at the time and I started adapting more towards videos. And then, you know, since then, I just, you know, everything kept building, building, the consistency was the key. But videos definitely, you know, that changed for me really. Um, I mean, and I learned a lot too. I mean, I've, at first I look at old videos now and I'm like, wow, I didn't know. You know, the, the technical aspects were great, but a certain angle or the way you know, you have to prep something before so it loses out the perfect way. And it's like all this science that goes into it. And of all the foodie merch you saw on your site, is there an item that is most popular? Uh, so, you know, I started that recently, um, but I love, I mean, I love the Send Nudes shirt just because, I mean, it, it has the Foodie Fetish logo inside of it. You know, it's a, it's a cool saying. So that, that's my personal favorite for sure. Um, I'm curious to see which one's going to be the okay. best seller. Um, but yeah, you know, yeah, from the, from the, you know, very original to the racy and I, and that's how I am. I mean, I'm very outgoing, funny. I love jokes. I love memes. So that's why you have to have a little bit of everything there for, for everyone. Nice. Nice. And within three years, um, foodie fetish has grown to over 3.3 million followers, which is quite amazing. And you could probably write a book on all the things that you've done to nurture your brand. But what are just a few of the positive growth strategies that you can point to when reflecting on that rapid growth? Because, I mean, it's only been several years. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's, I still can't believe it sometimes. It's, it's unbelievable. But I would say, uh, you know, just plain and simple working my butt off. Like, that's, I mean, that, that's the number one thing. That, that's what it is. I mean, for... Almost four years now. I've it's been non. I haven't. I've never taken a day off. Never taken one day off from. I mean, at least posting one time in the last, you know, four years basically. I have not taken a day off. That's that's number one consistency. Number two, I would say, is interacting with with followers. So you know, a lot of them. You know, obviously they comment. They send DMs. A lot of people send me their their food sometimes asking for feedback or, you know, they just have a simple question of where I'm in Miami this weekend and I'm looking for a steakhouse. Can you let me know? I, I respond to, I'm not going to say all of them because I'm not perfect and I get so many DMs, but I respond to a very, very good amount. And if I see it and, you know, I'm, I'm going to respond to it. And that's also what's led to the success is a lot of people sometimes I respond and they're like, oh my God, you, you actually responded to me or like they'll comment. They'll comment on a um, you know a video or something, and I'll reply to the comment, and they'll just be like, "Oh my god!" Like I I, I said this, you know, just thinking no one was going to reply, and and they're, they're absolutely shocked. So that aspect definitely helps because I understand. I mean, if, if I'm following someone, you know, that has a lot of followers, and and I love their page, and they respond to me, I'm I'm going to feel very you know close, and and I'm going to respect them even more now. So because I, I know they're busy, so the, the fact that they they went out of their way to respond to you. I mean, that, that builds a chemistry that, you know, they'll be a lifelong follower and a supporter for sure. So I think those two, you know, those two go hand in hand with the work ethic and going above and beyond what other people will just post and, you know, just leave it there or you know, yeah, just post and, and go on with their day. Like I still engage and that's very, very key. Good old fashioned hard work. I was hoping you was going to say there's a supplement I could take or something. I, trust me, me too. I, I, wish there was one, I wish there was one too. Some days it's like, oh my God, like, you know, it's, it's, I know there's no really, really magic pill. And right. the best part, I mean, with me is I literally started from zero. Like I still remember that. I mean, and it's crazy, but I look back and I'm like, wow, like I literally came out with a name started posting i got happy when i saw like seven likes on like my first or second post and you know just just from there built built on built on built and it's so it's crazy it really is i mean it's unbelievable to see something grow within your eyes and relatively too so it's, it's an amazing feeling well, For sure. well th also throughout the years you've had numerous partnerships with brands so is there any partnership that stands out in your mind or one that's your favorite um i would say let me see one one that i like and i'm currently um working with also is 
is Maimo Mochi ice cream. And they're, you know, the mochi, which is the ice cream inside the, uh, like the jelly, the, um, you know, like a jelly outside. Japanese, um, yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing, amazing company. They do outside the box events. So they, um, I went to New York about three months ago. They took over a museum in New York and they put, and it's, it's called the Color Factory. And it's basically, you know, a, a visual, very interactive museum. And they put their products into different rooms. There's like maybe five, diff uh, 15 different rooms and they had their products strategically placed. So, you know, you could interact with them. They have a, a ball pit with like 500,000 balls. And, you know, they, they hid, um, they hit some of their boxes inside and you found it, you want to hear supply. So just had, they just do very outside the box and fun things. And then they hired, they hired me to take over their, their Instagram account for the, for the evening. And then also do it on my Instagram stories and just walk, uh, attend the event and just show everyone how cool it was. So I love, you know, I love the product and I love what they're doing it to make it very fun and interactive. And they were like, they told me that like, you know what, just go have fun and, and document that. And that's, you know, that's my life. Having fun and doing, you know, the partnerships, that's the best way to do it. Because that's when, you know, people really see that the product is fun. And I mean, I'm enjoying myself, you know, they can see that. And it, it's very natural as well. It's very cool. So, and, yes. I, and I ask this question every time I talk to someone who predominantly works with delicious, decadent food day to day. Are there any days when you just crave like a large salad or a kale smoothie? <laughs> so I actually eat usually very healthy during the week. I try to do it as hard as it is. I try to do it, yeah, during the week. And then I try to reward myself on the weekends. Obviously, there's a lot of events that I go to during the week as well with gluttonous, crazy food. So I've, I've learned how to, you know, have a bite or two bites if it's really good three bites of it if it's exceptional and then just move on to the next thing so you know i have to try it and that's i mean i love food so i mean what is what, what good is it if it's like right there and i don't try it so I, I at least have to take a bite you know to know if it's really good so in between though i eat very healthy because there has to be a balance and i work out uh every day i mean that's that's the only way you know to stay to stay within my my goals which are you know to stay healthy and active so that's that's the only way i love food though it's very hard and tempting at first when i first started going to all these events it was hard i probably gained probably like 10 pounds and then i was like i was like okay this can this this 10 can go to 20 the 20 can go to 30. so i really have to you know reduce the uh reduce the portions for sure and then be selective with what i i eat and drink because those drink, those those amazing drinks at the events that are unlimited, can really can really add up too. So it's it's all about give and take for sure. And what are some of your goals for the remainder of the year as it pertains to foodie fetish? So definitely, I want to do an event or two, kind of like a food, you know, food centered event in a nice place in Miami, you know, on a rooftop or just a, an amazing venue. I also want to reach, I would say four, four million would be my goal by the end of the year. I mean, very hard goal, especially these days with the algorithm, but I'll definitely, I'll definitely try. Also, I want to just, you know, expand my, my partnerships. And I also do, so I do travel as well. I do that. I don't do it as much since I have, you know, a full-time job. I can't go as often as I would like but I do partnerships with, with hotels and destinations. So definitely would like to, to visit some cool new places for me, you know, either in Asia or you know, just very unique luxury properties is what I, I love doing. And, you know, my followers love it too because they get the whole experience of the food and then they get the ambiance and the, you know, the events and the views and all that that goes with it as well. So Want to join IntelliFluence as an influencer for free? It's easy. Visit IntelliFluence.com, click on the Influencers link, and then click on the Join for Free button to sign up. Once you have registered, you will get immediate access to our Influencer Marketplace where you can browse relevant offers from brands and apply on the spot. 
You'll also be eligible to receive attractive product and service pitches from brands. There's absolutely no cost to join as an influencer, so we hope you take advantage of our service. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and well, you know the drill. Until our next episode, keep being awesome.